Noah Greg Cavey, and you're listening to the Primatech Files. Hey, Primatech people. Welcome back to the Primatech Files, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things Heroes Prime and Heroes Reborn related things. I am Lilith, and joining me, as always, is... It's me, Ricky. Hello. And, of course, you heard the intro tag, so you know what that means. Another interview in our long series of interviews, and this time we have... Micah himself, Noah Gray Katie, <laughs> and it's <laughs> thank God we finally got an original. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just jump right in and have him tell us a little bit about himself. Not that we don't already know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you know, I'm Noah. Um, been on the uh, original original hero show since I was just a just a little guy. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to be asked back to do Heroes Reborn. Uh, and reprise my role as uh, Micah Sanders, which was a lot of fun. Hope you guys really enjoyed the show. It was uh, so much fun to make. Yeah, it seemed. I saw a lot of the uh, the Instagram stuff of you and what we what I've started to dub the Elvenga Truthers. Um, <laughs> just it seems like you guys had a blast. Yeah, we did. To be honest, you know, um, I was really really lucky because obviously you know you don't get to uh, meet your fellow cast members mm. uh, till the day. But I showed up on set. And everyone was just so, you know, full of energy, full of life. Uh, and, yeah, everyone was great. I mean, Ryan Guzman was great. Um, Nazneen, Lucius, uh, we called it, what do you call us? The, uh, the El- Elven- Elvenga Truthers. <laughs> I love it. We, we came up with uh, Los Vengadores. Oh, that, yeah. Someone else <laughs> and, uh, said that. And, and Squad. That's yeah. pretty much. I think that was Lucius's idea. Just squad. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that well, you good. guys certainly were squad goals. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. No, it was great working with those guys. I mean, to be honest, between takes, everyone was just like constantly hanging out, you know, having a great time. Just yeah, there was never a dull moment, so mm. it was great. Yeah, definitely. So um, let's let's start off with Heroes Prime, for lack of a better word. Um, do you have any fond memories of your time on on the show that you you care to share? Yeah, I mean. You know, doing Heroes at such a young age definitely was a different experience than uh, than Heroes Reborn. Back in the day, you know, it was uh, it was a little bit different because I was so young and I also still had school responsibilities to mm. take care of. So you know, I was pretty hard at work, uh, you know, nose to the grindstone. Um, but, you know, Ali Larder, Leonard Roberts, uh, my faux parents, as, mm. as they call themselves, <laughs> um, were absolutely great to work with, you know, every single day. They were just so much fun uh, and really, really supportive. I learned a lot from both of them. Follow up question. You know, that's my forte. Who, who was on set with you, your mom, your dad, or did they hire somebody else to do that? Um, yeah. So the way it pretty much worked is, is that my mom would just come with me uh, on set um, every single day. Uh, and a child actor also always has to have have a uh, studio teacher on set. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that that's pretty much how it worked. You know, the studio teacher was there to keep me in line, make sure I did my schoolwork. Leonard was always there to try to do the opposite, <laughs> get me to play some wee boxing <laughs> with him, hang out. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so Noah, how did you feel about your uh, the evolution of um, Micah in Heroes? You know, obviously he had his he had like came from a came from um, a single parent family to begin with anyway, then got both his parents, then kind of became orphaned. And then, you know, he had that little run in with Siler. And then we finally get the kind of, what what should I say, group leader, hero truther himself. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I, I mean, I thought it was great. Um, you know, way back in the day, it was kind of interesting because on the original heroes, uh, I feel like I feel like part of the trouble with the character of Micah is that, you know, he's a kid and you know, so many, so many of the cast members were killed off, you know, mm. um, but you can't really kill a kid <laughs> on primetime television. Not really, you know, the OK thing to do. So I think it was tough, you know, to find a place where Micah fit in to the storyline uh, in a way that, you know, stayed true to the plot. But I, I got to say, I think that Tim, and you know, the writers really, really succeeded because the whole storyline of Rebel and then who he becomes as, like you said, as Hero Truther is, um, really believable to me and it's also it's a great arc for the character you know i think that back in the day mike was kind of like wide-eyed and Mm -hmm. and you know was kind of always pouting to uh to nikki (laughs) kind of being like you know mom you know don't you know go crazy and turn into jessica and kill people um but now i think the hardened hero truther uh is a great is 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 the perfect evolution for that character to be honest Okay, so what did you think your character's ultimate motivation was? Uh, how do you or mean? Is? Like, well, I mean, 
now that his his journey is over for Heroes Reborn, like, what do you think he's up to? What is he doing? Is he still lurking in the shadows, trying to keep everybody honest? Or I hope so. Have happy life? <laughs> yeah, I think he's working with uh, Anonymous, the hacker group. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I think I think he is. I think that he, um, you know, one of the great parts uh, about Mike's character is that he can just like drop off the grid, uh, partly because you know he can control the grid. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think he's, he's definitely back to his old gig of, uh, being underground, you know, just monitoring everything. I think one of the great things that we saw in, uh, Heroes Reborn is that he basically just can hack into the entirety of the internet, control, you know, all media outlets. Mm. And so I think, you know, with that power comes responsibility. Um, and from, you know, from a very, very young age, I think he's, he's been all about that life. Mm. So, so I, I, I think he's continuing to do, uh, things much the way that he has been for the last, um, last few years. Yeah. Uh, I like, cause in my eyes, his kind of ultimate motivation was always to just, when he was young, he obviously had a very black and white view on the world and not that kind of morally gray. So he was always like, we should be superheroes. He's basically like Jose is at the end of um, Heroes Reborn. He was like, we could be the Fantastic Four minus one. I remember that line. And um, he always was like seeing the good in people. And he's always um, kind of pushing forward to kind of be that ultimate hero kind of goal. And then in the the comics, they kind of started to give him a bit of a morally gray aspect. Did you read any of the the graphic novels? There, there was that one particular... Um, arc where it was yeah it was i think it was called rebel and it was all about the background into the rebel character huh no i didn't i never read the comics i did have uh i did have some conversations with tim about the uh about the character mm. um but i didn't i didn't read the uh the the graphic novels one thing that i do think that was interesting about the rebel character is that well so firstly there, there are a couple scenes that got cut from um heroes reborn um from the finale from I think 11 and 12 as well, uh, where you get to see a little bit more of um, Hero Truther. And after watching the episodes, I definitely can see why those uh, scenes were cut. Just didn't have, didn't have enough, you know, space. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, there's actually, we, we actually filmed a, a scene where we're all driving to Odessa mm. and, um, and they show just a really quick clip of, you know, us all driving. Um, but after that, there's another scene where we're in the car and um, I talk to, um, I'm forgetting his character's name, Lucius's character. Jose. Is, uh, Jose, there we go, thank <laughs> you. So I talk to Jose about his dad and about what his dad did. And because, um, you know, obviously Mike is clued into all this stuff because, you know, he's, he's pretty good at keeping up mm-hmm. on his uh, current affairs, as you know, when it comes to <laughs> uh, Evos. Um, and he, you know, there's this great little conversation that they have where basically he's kind of passing the torch um to jose as the as as the kind of you know young uh member of the group and as as the next generation Mm. um and one of the things that micah says in that is basically he just says how great of a guy uh jose's dad was and says you know how how much he did for the community and what he did to further um you know you know just kind of bring evos into the mainstream Mm. and so i think that's kind of interesting because you were saying this whole morally black and white thinking um micah definitely still does have that perspective Mm. of we are superheroes if you look at el vengador he was quintessential masked uh you know comic book style superhero and so the fact that he looked up to this guy um, and followed him very, very closely, and then you know gives his son this whole speech about how fantastic he was and and what an absolute you know true hero he was. I think harkens back to that whole um, idea that yeah, Mike is still is in love deep down with that idea of you know Evo's kind of taking up this mantle and becoming real superheroes. Mm, definitely, and I think also a, a nice little um, thing that could be added onto that conversation between them is you know obviously. Micah, uh, uh, DL and and Jose both have the same power. So it's obvious, you know, he would kind of glom onto him because, you know, just in memory of uh, DL. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And actually, he does say uh, he doesn't reference that exact thing in the, mm-hmm. in the speech that got cut. But there is, um, you know, there's, there's a bit where Micah says, like, you know, look, I've, I've lost people too. Mm-hmm. not he doesn't say exactly what happened, but yeah. um, 
but yeah, he does he does give Jose a little bit of reference to the fact that he he knows what he's going through. Now I have to buy the DVD. Hopefully they put the cut. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Not that I wasn't going to buy it anyway. <laughs> Good. Um, anyway, uh, I'm just going to get a little personal. I'm sorry, because I'm curious. Do you still play the piano? <laughs> oh, that's not that personal. Um, I do still play the piano, actually. Um, I, I don't know if this is PC, but... Um, but I, I do play a little bit more now when I've been drinking. I think that's the only <laughs> difference between when I use, and I don't have that much time to practice uh, practice the piano and stuff like that. Uh, usually, I'm kind of you know just busy with school, um, or I'm busy with school and auditions, or school and filming. I actually had to uh, be in, I was actually enrolled um, in university when I was filming Heroes Reborn, which okay. was uh, pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was interesting. So I don't have a lot of free time to, to practice. Uh, but every now and again, you know, there'll be some kind of uh, event that I'll go to with my friends, some kind of like school event, and we'll have some wine, and then suddenly I'll end up somewhere in a common room playing a piano. <laughs> I love but, it. Uh, yeah. So so civilized. You're a college student, yeah. just some wine. I love it. <laughs> yeah, some wine. Yeah, well, I, I think I got all the uh, vodka out of my system earlier. No, no more shots for me. <laughs> uh, Good plan. <laughs> Oh, by the way, what is slash was your major in college? Uh, sociology. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's uh, it's really interesting, actually. I, you know, I, I at a liberal arts school, so it's kind of you can kind of pick and choose what you do, and you get exposed to a lot of different uh, concentrations. And uh, sociology is great for me because it's it's you know you it spans such a large area. There's so many different directions you can go with it that you can really kind of personalize it to your own tastes. So been really really nice awesome um so uh heroes reborn stuff so um there there's always been like uh this kind of not myth but everyone who's been on heroes prime said that you know they were on a a kind of a text group and when they saw that heroes reborn was coming out you know they were all madly texting each other firstly are you on that text group and secondly do you remember where you were when you when heroes reborn was kind of announced so I actually teased uh, Masioka about this because he said the same thing. Uh, he said the same thing when we were at some kind. I think we were at like a press thing in LA, and uh, I immediately was like, "You know what? I wasn't on that group text. <laughs> What's up with that?" <laughs> and I was joking, but yeah, he took it seriously, and he was like, "Well, oh. but you were so young, and we didn't." And I was like, "I'm just joking." <laughs> no, I was not. On, I was unfortunately not on the uh, group text, although I'm pretty sure that. There were, you know, some things said on that group text that were not appropriate for eleven year old eyes. <laughs> so that uh, makes makes sense. Um, but I do I do remember where I was when I found out uh, that they were doing Heroes Reborn. I was at school, and I think it was like early on, like it might have been like sophomore year or something like that. Uh, and someone I think had had like a Google alert set for my name. I think that's what happened because <laughs> this person sent me like an article right away. Uh, about Heroes Reborn uh, on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool! Like, who knows if it'll actually happen?" Because you know, so much stuff yeah. like that in the business, you know, something pops up, and then there's rumors and blah blah blah, and it doesn't happen, or it does happen, but you know, there there was nothing that said from the start that I was going to be hmm. um, included in that. So I was just kind of like, "Oh, cool! Like, I, you know, whatever it's going to happen, like, hopefully it does. You know, I'd love to see it." And then uh, it wasn't until they had already started filming actually uh, that I got some calls saying you know this is the direction we want to go um would you be willing to come back and uh and you know play mike again and uh that was really the first time i had had, you know been contacted about it and i got so excited i was so pumped for that so let's let's uh let's go off tangent for a bit so um you were you were heavily featured in the kind of webisode series uh dark matters and your kind of character is introducing us to the kind of new world that we're we're going into um how was it to kind of be be back on set, so to speak, just, you know, working on Heroes and seeing like the webisode through? That was a really interesting experience, actually, because at that point, I wasn't completely sure what my role was going to be in the mm-hmm. actual show. Um, so and it was also an incredibly fast shoot. So something that I would not have guessed by looking at that webisode, the webisode series, was that um, all of my scenes were shot uh, in one day. Yeah. So it was really, you know, hit the ground running because it was a long day. We got a lot done. Um, but it was incredible, you know, uh, reading reading the lines and, you know, those those big, lo- nice, yeah. long speeches that, you know, Mike is giving at the beginning. 
Mm. Uh, they were they were amazing, you know. Yeah. And then that's kind of the stuff that I always wanted to do originally. And I think that I was, you know, I I grew up pretty fast, and so you know, when I was young doing the doing the show, it's kind of frustrating as a young kid mm. who, uh, you know, take tra- you know, kind of takes his job seriously to have these lines that you know have this dialogue that's that's so simple mm. and nothing against the writers but it's just you know the writing for a child yeah. um but you know when you're just you know around 11 12 13 you kind of want to break through that you want to have some more meaty stuff to work with um and so getting to come back to the same character and now kind of have him have all those dimensions and all that you know strength mm. behind everything he's saying that i always wanted to give him was great um, so yeah, it was huge, it's huge honor to be kind of the first one to introduce, uh, the new world and definitely responsibility too, because I wanted to hit it hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to really put my all into those speeches yeah. and make it, make it as, as, uh, get it across as very hostile situation yeah. that we're jumping back into. Cause it was, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think your, I, th- I think, um, Hero Truther's, uh, speeches were very good in setting up the world that we were in. And, you know, not only talking about Evos where they are, but like just humanity itself. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It I'm was, just going to uh, give them the follow up of our theory. Uh, sorry. Remember? Go on. <laughs> well, we, were, we started podcasting about just Heroes Prime in the interim before Heroes Reborn started. And then like it hit us when we realized that you were going to be in it. No, no. You hadn't even been announced yet. We kept wondering, is Micah going to be in it? Micah should be the bad guy. <laughs> 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 like it would make sense if after all the things that happened to him. Right. And I was like, yeah, it's like an evil tech company. Maybe he's secretly pulling the strings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. I, I've actually heard that theory a couple times. I would have loved to be the bad guy, honestly. You know, I, I've always loved bad guys in uh, in shows and movies and stuff. They're always the coolest ones. So I would love to be Evil Micah. If there's ever, like, a third installment of this or, you know, anything like that, yeah. I would totally be down to come back yeah. as super off-the-rails Micah. <laughs> yeah, he just... <laughs> Something happens and he just snaps and he's like, he's, yeah, "Yeah, he's had enough. <laughs> he's just had enough of humanity having to go at having to go at Evos." And he's to just be like, honest, yeah. though, it, that would make sense. Yeah. Like you know, and and I think that that um, is something that I tried to put across in the scenes that I did. Um, even though you know, the, by the time that Mike is introduced, the the Farah and Carlos Jose storyline is kind of tapering out mm. um but in the few scenes i did get to get to really put my all into that's something that i did want to get across is that like he's not just a happy guy mm. like he like mike never smiles yeah. in the new like in the, you know True, like yeah. not once you know mo- most is like a small smirk but he's not a happy dude because <laughs> yeah he's give he's been you know dealt a pretty tough hand um so i think that would totally make sense for mike to be a bad guy i couldn't agree more yeah <laughs> Um, what was it like having those little mini scenes with Henry Zabrowski? Everyone we talk to loves the guy. Um, are you? No, in- he's terrible. Yeah, I thought sure. so. <laughs> uh, no, he, I was actually just talking to my roommates about it because my roommates watched the whole show. Hmm. Um, you know, make mixed opinions on it because they're yeah. obviously very, very truthful, uh, honest people with me. Too, too honest. <laughs> uh, no, but mixed opinions. Like some of them absolutely loved it. You know, others weren't too keen on it. Um, but. You know, we were talking about the cast members because by the end, of course, everyone's so invested in the stories and everything. So we're talking about uh, the different cast members and stuff. And I was just describing Henry to to them. And he's just he, he's crazy. Mm. You know, he's crazy and he's awesome. And he's really nice. Mm-hmm. He was uh, I had never met him before. And I just didn't stop laughing the whole <laughs> day that I was filming the uh, all the prequel stuff. Really, like he, he's just the funniest guy ever. <laughs> And you don't know how he does it because, you know, he's he's not like a lot of a lot of comedians are, you know, can be a little bit like obnoxious or kind of tire you out. But he's not. He's just really fun to hang out with. Um, he's just the nicest guy and just hilarious. Yeah. So it was a, it was a fun day, to say the least. When you graduate, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep acting? Do you want to pursue music? Do you want to use your degree in sociology, teach or? Um, you haven't decided. No pressure. Uh, no, no, no. The definitely pressure. Um, <laughs> no. So I, I do want to keep acting. Um, I love it. You know, um, it's it's such a fun thing to do. And I think that uh, at this point in my life, I'm I'm pretty ready to uh, dedicate you know more time and effort to it. Um, I was faced with a pretty tough decision back when Heroes ended. It was kind of like mm. you know, do you want to keep? Because I was at that awkward age, you know, like yeah. 13, 14. And so I kind of was like, all right, should I keep 
struggling and trying to get work and stuff, even though I'm in like that horrible age where, you know, everyone's getting cast down to like yeah. 15, 16 years old or, you know, and I read old anyways, like I always did. So mm. as a 14 year old going in for a role that's 14, I, it would usually not work. I'd usually read about 16. So I was just I was in this kind of awkward place. So I decided to, you know, take some time away, focus on other stuff and then come back uh, post puberty, basically. Mm. <laughs> um, so, so that's what I've basically done. And, um, you know, so far it's going great. And the plan is to uh, keep, you know, keep some uh, some things in the works, you know, keep auditioning and stuff like that while I'm finishing up my degree. And then once I finish it up to uh, head back out to L.A., and uh and keep plugging away out there so that's that's the plan you know things can change of course but right now that's <laughs> that's what i'm trying to do you you said you read old and i think that's very apropos because every time well, we 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 re-watched um heroes prime before the show started up I do it old, and old. we you were we said that you were quite like michael was quite the old soul like he was very much parenting his parents as opposed to being a child for half the time do you know what i'm saying yeah definitely i really <laughs> like that about his character too um set it up quite nicely for him to be an orphan as well because mm. like you know he, he had to have that strength um yeah no i think i think that was great and i think that um i think the writers did a great job of making him evolve even during yeah. the original heroes you know over the course of the three seasons that you know he was in there um so yeah i think they did an absolutely fantastic job of of showing that you know, uh, and and it's almost like they knew that they were going to be coming back with this um, new hero truther character yeah. uh, in mind. Um, so yeah, that was fantastic. Okay, so um, I'm just going to ask: uh, Do you uh, do you still plan on making? Do you plan on making another CD for for Aim? You know what? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. A lot of yeah, I know it was, it was a great idea. There's a lot of thing. You know, a lot of um, you know, as you say, t- you know, things change. Um, was it a different, you know, place back then? Had a lot of, a lot more time. I was also able to uh, to focus a lot more on music, and mm. it, yeah, it's kind of funny too because I did so much stuff with my family back then. If you've done, um, if you read about, you know, on the website and mm-hmm. stuff like that, it was mainly, you know, focused around my family. Uh, and you know, we've all grown up. Yeah. Sad, but it's true. We've all grown up, and we're all in different parts of the world doing different stuff. You know, my oldest brother, he. Joined the military. He's out now, but he was deployed a bunch of times. And my other brother is looking to go to med school. So it's, you know, it's everyone's dispersed, man. It's sad. Um, but but hopefully I'll get to do other stuff like that soon. I think I need to I need to get out of college first because mm. it's pulling me on all sorts of different directions right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would love to. I would love to do more stuff along that vein, just not necessarily uh, CD. Okay. So I'm just going to be nosy and I want to, like, I actually love Franklin on my wife and kids, right? I'm sorry. I don't mean to embarrass you about that. (laughs) And he actually got to play the piano and I thought that that was just a really great character. But are you in touch with anybody from my wife and kids at all? No? Um, Say no. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You know what? The the person I stay in best contact with was Tisha. Um, Tisha was honestly kind of like like an aunt you know like because i wouldn't talk to her for ages and then like somehow i'd end up on the phone with her and chat with her you know for a while but i haven't chatted with tisha in ages but i really really should because i know that it would you know not even be a hiccup it you know there would be there would be nothing but just like oh how have you been (laughs) so i should i should call tisha um i you know i'm in touch with parker a little bit you know as as young folk have Instagram and stuff these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I uh, mentioned her in a comment and then uh, and she wrote back. And then her mom actually, her mom wrote back uh, to me, which was really sweet because I knew, you know, of course I spent like every day with Heather, her mom, back in the day because, you know, she would have had to be on set with Parker all the time. Um, so, so it was really nice hearing from Heather. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't stay in touch a huge amount, but like I said, Parker and Tisha... Uh, talk to you every now and again, which is pretty good considering it's been a long, long time. So that's, long that's time. <laughs> just just a little bit. <laughs> Where can our fans find you on uh, any social media that you'd like to plug? Everywhere, Micah controls the internet. So 
I know your browser history. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, well, to be honest, I'm like the worst at social media. I just got a Twitter because they made me. Yeah. NBC made me get a Twitter. Okay. Um, so if you want to help me out, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I don't know my Twitter handle, but it's got a little tick. So, um, yeah, I've got Instagram, too. They made me get one of those. So <laughs> I've got... I'm like actually the most technologically challenged person you'll ever ever meet. <laughs> That's um, ironic. <laughs> but but that no, but I <laughs> yeah, it's actually terrible. We were just trying to set up uh, an Xbox in the room, and even that, I was like, guys, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Uh, but no, I got an Instagram. Big fan of Instagram. Uh, I like to you know go because it's just like a little snippet hmm. um, of information, and, you know, pictures, seeing what people are up to. So I got an Instagram now. Um, yeah. You know, message me, whatever. I like to talk to different people from walks of life. I find that really interesting. Uh, so, you know, I try to respond to messages and stuff like that um, just to kind of like see where people's heads are at. Love listening to the fans and stuff. And to be honest, I just really appreciate the uh, the support that Heroes Reborn did get from the fans. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the storyline is a little crazy. It's a little hard to follow because, you know, it's Heroes. Mm. Um, we'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Um, <laughs> But it takes, uh, you know, it takes definitely a certain type of uh, audience to to fall in love with that. So, I, you know, I'm always so grateful to the fans mm. who just get a kick out of all this crazy, awesome time travel, superpower, uh, you know, craziness. So yeah. <laughs> really can't, you know, can't say thank you enough. Definitely. And uh, I guess what? Hashtag evil, evil Micah for season two. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so down. <laughs> All right, well, we want to thank you guys for joining us on this interview, as well as Noah. Uh, we hope you found it entertaining and informative. And until next time, download the podcast, save the world. Bye.